lips or no? So uh, let me start to do that. So with the mouth, um, uh, let me think here. Now, so what I would try and do here when I break this shape down, you know, I'll just do a reference like that. So what's that bit there? And it's interesting. Um, sometimes, but I'll say to you, where's your line end? You go, what's he talking about? The line, the line is like a contour. It has to connect with something else. Um, you have to develop the ability to see that. You just have to keep trying. I appreciate the effort. So with that lip, you go, what the heck is that connected to? It's connecting to that muscle that's attached here to the, to the bottom of the nose, the, the bridge of the nose, excuse me, this part of the nose, cartilage here. So it's attached to that. That's what it is. It's a, in a, it's a very specific reason why it's there. In other words, the association of the mouth is associated with some of the structure of the nose and the structure surrounding the nose. Now, the other bit, I'm depending uh, in terms of length, um, for distance between the mouth and the top of the lip and uh, the height and the height of the bottom lip. Anatomically, we're all going to be different. There's going to be variance for a number of genetic reasons. But ultimately, this breakdown is the same. It works for all of them. So that, 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 that's what's important to realize. Proportions might change, but the structure won't. Um, so. Now, uh, it gets real interesting, this top lip, where's it going to end if you see, because we tend to see the red bit that's more prominent, and we go, we draw a line around it. Uh, that's not good anatomy, because what you're mistaken for that differentiation between the color and the pigmentation of your skin and the color of your lip is an anatomical structure. It isn't. Uh, you have to separate the color of that pigmentation with the anatomical structure of the mouth underneath. In other words, they don't, always, they don't always connect up consistently. The line for that lip might not be the same as the line of the muscularity underneath. So you have to see them as separate things. Don't see them as the same thing. So when you get someone drawing a whole lip shape all the way from the mouth, it looks awful. It looks flat and two-dimensional. And the reason for that is anatomically and volumetrically, volumetrically um, the two things are separate. So in other words, this top lip here, what's interesting, the red bit and the muscle around it is stopping short of the widest extent of the mouth. It's not going out all the way to the edges of the mouth. With some anatomical... Um, um, yeah, so you'll, you'll see with the mouth at neutral, you'll see that starting to go in before the bottom lip goes all the way out. So you look in the mirror. Now that will be different with some people. Some people it might go all the way to the edges and it might change. But I'm making a general statement. So with all these things, I'm making a general statement. I'm not feeling very uncomfortable at the minute. Nothing worse than sitting on some keys. Uh, so um, now for the bottom of the lip, that kind of gets interesting. So let me think of the reference for this guy. Used to doing that, so that's probably going to come out all the way. Um, so the other thing that fascinates me is with this part here. What is controlling the edge of the mouth? It's interesting. It's correlating to. Let's get the nose. This is crude. Um, the bottom bit of the nose, this bit here, the broadest bit on the nose. It correlates to the mouth mask, the edges of the mouth mask. And it correlates to the muscles to the end of the mouth. So in other words, as they change, the edge of the mouth changes. <laughs> They're not independent of each other. Um, now the other thing, when you've maintained uh, a structure like this, uh, there's other thing that's going to come into play. This anatomical shape is going to be doing this. Okay. There is a shape that does that with the muscle there. And in other words, it starts going in convex. And you know what that makes it easy for? Shadow. 
Because if some of you are struggling with shadow, and once you have the structure worked out, the bottom layer, it starts being easier on where definition comes. The other thing that's real interesting is the bottom bit of the lip. So let's cover that now, making shapes with this. Um, what's interesting, this shape, you go in, how do you know when to go up as opposed to straight or like that? When do you know when to stop that? It's interesting, look at the chin. And there's a muscle, part of the muscle that's distinct around here that almost goes to this part of the chin here. In other words, that, if this is prominent, so we got the ball on the chin, okay? Uh, what's interesting, that bit is prominent. I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that you're kind of going to get this shape here. There's, there's a connection, depending on the shape of what your mouth muscle is doing. But in a neutral pose, you've got something that's kind of close to this in terms of underlying structure. Some more prominent than others. So what does that make it easy for? It makes it easy for this. If the shadow is coming directly above us, perfect 12 o'clock shadow, um, it's going to be real easy for where to define that shadow. So already, uh, we, you know, we, have a, we have a structure. So what you've got to think when you're drawing the mouth is, gosh, there's another mouth. And so saying that, you've got to say, What's distinct about that shape? Because the problem, it, uh, this is kind of a reverse psychology. If you say, gosh, there's another mouth to draw, let's just fill this in quickly. I bet you in most cases, with lack of experience, you've come up with a stereotypical shape of what a mouth should be. You stop looking with the same intensity. If you stop looking at it as a mouth and looking at it as a set of structures and the things I pointed out, you'll start going, Hold on, the way the light and the shape, and the way that's hit, hitting the mouth, what is that volume doing there? What is that line doing there? At any point you say, I'm just drawing another mouth, you're being lazy. Now, it's okay when we're doing a 30 minute pose, a minute, excuse me, a 30 second pose, a minute pose. I understand the time constraints, you're just doing it in quick. But when you're going for those five minute poses, or 10 minute, or 20 minutes, when you go to that mouth, you have to avoid being uh, ambiguous with the form. You have to start training yourself to look at those shapes. Now, that whole thing with the mouth mask. Okay, so you can see a breakdown. Another breakdown of this would be, I'm going to draw through this. You wouldn't get actual line with it. But the way I'm going to try and draw this here is... So you can see it nice and clear. Um, that shape is going to go all the way to the edges. Bottom lip, top lip. Uh, for the, those of you looking upside down. Uh, so um, what, what, what I'm drawing here is it would be almost like if, you, if I was designing the lip in CGI, for a 3D modeler, whether you're using Maya or whatever you're using, I see that as a flat plane. I see that as a flat plane, I see that as a flat plane. Not on the same plane as this, or this. They're different, it's a different plane. That bottom lip, how am I going to break it out? Well, something kind of similar. <clears throat> that is a, its own separate plane. A different plane to that. In other words, polygon. Uh, as a set of polygons, they're all separate polygons. They're not the same polygon. You know how crappy that looks if you try to make it look the same polygon? Yes. Why is that the bottom lip goes to the outside line? And it doesn't match up with the top. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, uh, just the way the, the muscle curves around the top, of the, uh, the top of the mouth to the bottom of the mouth, the muscle structure is doing something slightly different. On the bottom. And the good thing about... Uh, not matching them up is you avoid uh, twinning. Mm. Another thing when you're trying to draw anatomy, one slight change in nuance, actually it brings a sense of uh, realism. Because people are start looking at the distance and it's starting, uh, starting short. I've seen anatomists with no experience doing a 3D model mm -hmm. and they have them both at the same length. Right. It looks crap. Yeah. There's no ways around it. It, looks, it look, doesn't look good. And what's interesting, you'll say to the guy who doesn't know anatomy or the gal looking at you, say, 
what's wrong with math? And they go, well, it just doesn't look right. Yeah, they won't right. say, well, you know, anatomically, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, that's up for the guy building it to learn what that is and what they did wrong. Um, so you have to be conscious if you're going to be building these in 3D of what works. So I'm going to break this up into a series of plans. Okay. So that's why you get overlap on the upper bit because of that reason. Um, yes, you do. This this is starting to come. Oh, this is overhang. This has more overhang usually at that at, at this area, the top, right. where I'm neutral, than the bottom part. So there's an overhang there. And think about overhang. Your top of your jaw and your mouth. There's an overhang yeah. on the bottom jaw. So that's the reason why, is where your, uh, your dentures are sitting, uh, why the lip is like it is. Look at an old person with no false teeth in, and that definition starts to disappear. So a lot of the structure and definition you're seeing are because of the, the teeth and the overhang of the top jaw in relation to the bottom jaw. Look at an old person with no teeth, with dentures out, and all that caves in. Oh, yeah. It sucks in. So what you're what you're identifying with this underlying uh, our structure is dentures. So some people are going to have more of an overhang than others. Why is that? Teeth, the teeth, the teeth under the, the teeth underneath that structure. So that that's that's what's defining. And the other thing um, about a younger mouth is the elast elasticity of the muscle. Ask an athlete, uh, an amateur in my case, who tries to run. What happens to the muscularity as you get older and you try and run and you sit down and you don't do worn down? For a young person doing it, this is not going to be such a shrinkage. And uh, there's not such elasticity um, about that. Things are starting to get brittle, even with muscle, uh, sinew, and bone. Everything is getting more brittle. Um, so the other thing about the shapes of the mouth here and... Um, this shape here I talked about, the bottom of the nose, um, we start to get something in, excuse me, that should go all the way up here. I got a very elongated, exaggerated uh, mouth now. Um, so that's kind of interesting, that shape, which means it gets real interesting uh, with this here. So I know if that was a polygon, what direction that's pointing out? Uh, you know, I mean by normals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know when you're working in CGI, when normals comes up, if you're ignoring that, you shouldn't be by this stage. Uh, normals are the way that the uh, polygon points out in order to see it as a visual representation. You know, without a norm, and you can have a double-sided uh, polygon, so that the normals are, paint, uh, are firing out both ways just means so we can see in, in direction of the viewer. So I know with this guy, if I was to do an arrow pointing out, I know which angle that would be pointing out approximately. And I know it by, by um, the familiarity I have to the anatomical structure. So that's what's, in other words, I'm, I'm seeing, before I even go to build anything in 3D, I'm seeing the shape already in 2D. And I'm always thinking, what direction, if I, only have one polygon to describe this part here. What direction would the normal be pointing out? And if I was to sculpt it in clay, I know, you know, it, I wouldn't be talking about normals, but I would have an idea of the angularity of this section to this section, to this section, to this, to this, to this. Everything would be uh, assigned a different um, angle that the normal would be pointing out. Okay? Gosh, I wish I could should have bought in the 3D app and then uh, related it. Okay, um, so that's that's the mouth shape. So let me do another. There's another separate polygon. Good grief! I mean, with this, well, that depends. Would I break it up into two? Initially, when I start, when I'm building a face in 3D, that will be assigned one polygon. That's one polygon. Um, this is another polygon. This is another polygon. And um, so, just at the bottom area, one, two, three, four. Uh, then you get a thing, you know what sub-D, sub-Ds are. So, you, I can sub-D these. And I know, gosh, 
How many polygon, how many vertices to each polygon have I got to do so far? Four. The quads. Yeah. If you do, if, if you're not strict with that and it works the same in drawing as it does in CGI, uh, bigger fool you if you say I'm going to have five points to this. Avoid triples as much as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking in quads automatically. And uh, my good, a good anatomical foundation will, um, that will easily lay on top of it. If you're lazy with your anatomy, you're going to be lazy with your polygon and 3D structure. I, I promise you. Now, the sub D in order to take care of how those uh, polygons start to bend and have a more uh, organic uh, feature, depending on the level of subdivision within the polygon. I've spent about 20 years trying to learn those things. Now, um, um, if any, anyone's seen my 3D model, they'll, they'll know I'm uh, super, and I've had so many art directors uh, ridicule my staff. Um, so I've really tried to make an effort and pains with sort of learning that. So the good thing about all of these, uh, the angle, uh, looking at the angle of light, and I'm gonna color them slightly different. Um, it makes it so much easier. If I, if I, I, wish I should have bought, bought red. Uh, sub -D, the sub D of these would be going all the way through these shapes. And I could almost predict how it, I can see this as a 3D uh, mesh um, as well as I can do as a, a 2D drawing. Because of the thousands of hours I've tried to model in so many unsuccessful attempts and having to redo things over and over and over again and be so frustrated and then go back and go why is that wrong why is that shape wrong so you can see that as a 3d polygon i hope um okay for let's just shove the the white uh, black to the basic uh, polygon so now with noses okay shall i start to Continue this up. That's not probably the best example, but noses. Gosh, I need the math mask. Uh, I need the eye mask. So, uh, this, um, this, uh, what this is going to be. Starting with the ma micro is dumb. I should have started with the macro, but anyway. Uh, hey, with a tip. For eye masks, think of it at the top of the pair of sunglasses. Don't be bending it too much. Don't be bending it in like the same that is there. It's not the same. Think of those really those shades that they wear in uh, snow, uh, the, the winter sports. You know, it's almost like that's almost going to be straight across the top, like that curve. Uh, this bit here. Okay. Promise, if you keep it like that, you'll be fine. For an expression to you? For an expression that's going to change, but think neutral and think how to, um, whenever the expression changes, how to exaggerate the neutral. In other words, this is always your starting point. Um, if you're having problems remembering the shape, start with that and, it, and then exaggerate from there. Don't, um, if you're having problems understanding the structure, it's hard straight to go to an exaggeration and go, well, what, what am I, where am I exaggerating it from? That's why all the best are comic artists, manga artists, animators um, study so much anatomy. Okay, so noses. Tricky thing here is that we always have problems with the, with the bridges. So let me try and explain this. Uh, depending on the shape. I know what my shape is. It's, what's my other say about my nose? I forgot I'm not going to tell you. Uh, so it's kind of indents like that. Uh, the cool thing about the eye mask and the shape of the nose is going to be essential for any type of consistency here. And I've already figured out the math mask. So what I'm going to do with the nose, it's, it's, just fall, it's going to fall into place. It's going to be a shape like that and a shape like that. That's, that's it. That is not separate from that. That is not separate from this. They are not autonomous of each other. The whole structure and design, there is a flow from one end to the other where the shapes fit. It is a perfect puzzle that all interlocks together. 
They are not autonomous of themselves. If one expression changes in one place, it affects the thing that's connected next to it. So those shapes have to work together. So you have to start becoming familiar with them to be a good anatomist, which you've all got the capability to do. Uh, one is because I've noticed all of you have natural curiosity. Um, so don't be defeatist. You have no right to be because of your curiosity. Uh, so because of that, the, the nose fits in between the mouth mask and the eye mask. They all relate to each other. This bottom bit's tricky. Um, oh, and the other cool thing about this, it means one face, one, fa uh, one polygon, one polygon. I might divide it up like this if I was uh, into another one. I'd probably divide it. I think I remember I do something like that. And it joins with the bottom of the eye mask. It, it, it interlocks perfectly. My geometrical, my geometric form in 3D absolutely follows the physiology of, of the face. They're not separate from each other. In terms of the radial effects that I'm going to be making on the mouth uh, to the eyes, it's, it's so straightforward. I, I should do a demo. Uh, I'll try and bring my laptop next time on Monday, maybe. Mm -hmm. and that, that might I think be I have a light wave on there, but. It's just the 9.6, not 100. That's good. If you do, uh, if, you, if you have it with you, I can do it. If you uh, 9.6 will be no problem. Um, okay. Um, you know, and then the other thing, so I've talked about the nose. Okay, let me go into more detail with the nose. My, my apologies. So, um, so I, I'm going to... Imagine that over here. So you can see it fits into an overall pattern. And uh, if I take the uh, nose over here, I'm going to break this up into simple shapes, okay? Yeah. Front, front of the nose. Crappy, crappy looking nose. Huh? Um, <laughs> but uh, if you get these distinct shapes at the beginning, it gets it real easy to break it up. At this point, and there's a tapering from the base of the nose up to the 3D part. And let me start thinking about what that tapering might involve here. Um, and I said already about this shape here. Um, I just need someone to copy, but I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass them. Uh, I just I'll look at myself in the mirror and study the notes. Um, so this bottom section completely separate from the bridge. This here and here represents this part of the nose and this part of the nose here. And they've all got names. Uh, I can't remember all of the names. Um, so the nostril area. Let's do this bit now. This is going to be important. That bit for the, the joints uh, to the top lip, this bit here. This is really important for figuring out this and this, the nostril oh, itself. Cool. Yeah, so if you're trying to figure out, gosh, how, how, how is that going to help me with the nostrils? Because that's always tough, especially in Shannon. You think, God, what's that shape doing and where's the joint to? It's a pin that it's a blind man. It's it's a blindfolded person trying to pin the don donkey's tail again. Um, so with this little device here, you you know how it matches up with the nostril. And the nostril is kind of interesting um, with the shape. It's it's not a consistent ellipse. And I, I noticed with the shape of mine, it'll be going round and up. It almost does like a spiral. Um, yeah, it's it's not a it's not a consistent ellipse. So in other words, the front bit, as I'm connecting up this bit, I notice I get that kind of shape, and then that's kind of going. Under. If I can, I, I could imagine it that the back part I'm doing white, excuse me, it, it going up into up, up into there. It's kind of, kind of, kind of how I'm almost seeing the ellipse. Um, what else about the noises? So this bit here. I'm going to start getting shape and drawing over the top. It kind of 
kind of it fits in. So all this bit here is the side and the underneath of the nerves. All through here. All this is going to be definitely in shadow. Imagine the ideal top clock uh, shadow. All this is going to be in shadow. So this is something that you learn. This isn't. This is nothing to do with natural talent. Um, forget that myth. Oh, they do that, you know, because they're naturally talented. That's that's a crock. That really is. They do that because they spend thousands of hours studying physiology. What do you know? Surprise! That's how they got good. It was not. They did not, in their mother's womb, have that innate ability to draw noses. <laughs> Um, so you see with the shape of that, another one, you can see the shape of that top lip and this shape here. And the way the undulations and, and are protruding with this. So it's really difficult to isolate a specific part of the face. But look, look at the structure of it, just with those, just with those few shapes, just with that block method. And, and already we're getting some shape. And of course, I'm seeing this structure. I'm not drawing it. Now, when I go to put my lights in parks, I got some ballpark estimation of, of, of that nose. Yeah, that might get, you know. And then you get the little undulations, undulations in here. You might get a bit of light, like top, depending on the shape of this part of the nostril that comes out. Some people's will indent and concave. The certain parts. Some people's will go straight. So it really depends, but if you've got that structure, structure is as simple as this at the front. There you go. That's it. Breaking down into the simplest form. That shape has to come out wider than the bridge. And with that, then you can start to break it down. If you don't have that as a basis, your nose is not going to look right. Okay? And that shape definitely has to match up with the bottom of that eye mask. You can, you can imagine the eye in there already. So there's a, there's a system and pattern, a beautiful pattern to all of this that makes everything work. Um, what I started off there, which I don't like, and this is the problem when I'm demoing, uh, I don't, because I, I um, is when I'm drawing these things, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you a micro, a, a part of, and what's the best way to start? Macro. It's established in the overall. And that's the key, I think, to really good efficient draftsman in physiology is um, the student has to be thinking of the macro I'm working into micro. And a lot of novice students want to uh, start with something they're familiar with. So they start with micro. And they start with the part and work out. Hence why the feet fall off the bottom of the page. That's why that happens, because you're focused on micro. You have to always establish macro. Think big, work in small. Um, you know, so now, with everything else on this, with the, I am, you know, I mean, everything for me now is going to fit in place um, as, as a structure. You know, the eyelids, that, that, um, Poly, if that was a polygon, there's the petition for the lids. Actually, what I do inside here is I cord it. Uh, 